Right now, it is time for Arthur Schwartz, the Food Maven. Uh, of course, Arthur joins us on a Monday morning. We talk about food, and also, I guess I should say Happy New Year, right, Arthur? Happy New Year, yes. That's why apples are on my mind, because today is the first full day of Rosh Hashanah, and a traditional thing among some families, I think at these days, most families, uh, uh, on, on the eve, meaning last night at the big dinner for, for New Year's, somebody asked me, oh, yes, this morning, I was already on the phone, but with Italy, and uh, are there any special dietary uh, rules about Rosh Hashanah? Uh, no. <laughs> there are traditions, however. Anyway, apples dipped in honey is the big deal tradition. This is to ensure a sweet New Year. You know, it's superstition. And you eat other sweet things uh, uh, on Rosh Hashanah, including honey cake. Uh, I have a honey cake that I like, but this, it's a rare honey cake that I do like. But instead of making honey cake for Rosh Hashanah, what I made was an apple walnut cake, which has sort of been aching to make. Um, it's a cake I've made, I don't know, at least dozens of times. It's in one of my cookbooks. It's in Jewish Home Cooking but you don't have to be Jewish to appreciate this cake. What I must say, what makes it Jewish, well, let me just start by saying there are a lot, a lot, a lot of Jewish apple cakes. Recipes galore out there. I just, just put in Jewish apple cake on the Internet and don't ask what happens. So, and also, if you, unfortunately, if you, if you put it in, uh, in certain places, you're going to be inundated with apple cake recipes as it is the, the algorithms do that these days. Anyway, uh, this is a oil-based cake, so it can be eaten with a meat meal, meaning in the dietary, Jewish dietary laws, and there are, you know, the general kashrut laws, you can't eat uh, anything with dairy at the end of a meat meal, and because it's a festive holiday, New Year, uh, most people, if they're not, if they're not vegetarians or vegan, are, are making it a meat meal. So, because that's a festive meal, a brisket. So, uh, this cake you could have with anything, because it's oil based. Making it oil based, I have to add, gives it a particularly fine grain. Now, in general, cakes made with butter are coarser than cakes made with oil, and most Americans prefer cakes made with oil because a lot of us, if not all of us, were weaned on cake mixes. And cake mixes are based on oil. I, I haven't looked in a long time, but I, it's, a, it's the rare cake mix that calls for butter. So um, anyway, this is a very good cake. Uh, the recipe is in my book. I don't know, should I outline the whole recipe? Because it is a little long. Well, why not? Radio. Well, why not? Is it going to take, what, is it gonna take 20 some <laughs> minutes? <laughs> no, that okay. won't do that. No, here, this is the, I love this cake. It makes an enormous uh, uh, cake in, in a, um, a tube pan. I don't. Use, I have a bun pan that's good for it, but I don't use it for various reasons, including it's harder to get out of the pan. You know, an articulated bun pan uh, really has to be buttered extremely well. I, I, I use butter, but if you're, you are kosher, you can use a... Uh, you know, margarine, power of margarine. And um, just, it's just for greasing the pan. So I use, in fact, my grandmother, this is not my grandmother's recipe, but I, I have inherited her two pans that she used at Passover to make all these sponge cakes. And I use my 12-cup tube pan with the, with the removable bottom. If you've got a pan like that, it's aluminum, light aluminum. And if you have a pan like that, it's the ideal pan for this cake. Uh, if you have a bun pan, as long as it's a 12-cup bun pan, that's also a great um, pan to make it in, as long as it's not too articulated. So here's the recipe. I, you know what? I, I'm not your avid baker, and I do this in stages. So first, let's do the dry ingredients. Three cups of flour, which you measure by spooning the flour into the measuring cup and then leveling it off, and don't press it down when you're leveling it off. Um, into the three cups of flour, stir one tablespoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and that's it. 
and stir that all together. Those are your dry ingredients. Now you're going to make a little cinnamon sugar, which is going to be seasoning the apples themselves. And that consists of five tablespoons of sugar to two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. I, I, watch, I do watch some food TV, and I have to note that nobody ever makes cinnamon sugar anymore. They tell you to go out and buy a jar of cinnamon sugar. I'm not sure what that's about. Almost everybody who ever bakes has cinnamon in the house, and certainly everybody's got sugar in the house, unless they're a sugar-free life. And so make your own cinnamon sugar. Two teaspoons of cinnamon, five tablespoons of sugar, just mix it together. Then you've got the actual batter, and I'm never, I, I never can decide, should I cut up my apples first and then make the batter, or make the batter and then cut up the apples? It depends. And what does it depend on? What apples are you using? I, went, I bought a huge bag of Macintosh apples the other day. One, because they were right off the farm. Two, because they look great. Three, because they were very inexpensive, like $1.50 a pound. And I had various apple things I wanted to make. And I'm thinking to myself, even, even my grandmother's applesauce was certainly made with Macintosh apples. Because way back when, there weren't all these different apples available to us. Uh, uh, Granny Smith was originally uh, Australian, I guess, apple. And we got them in the, in the summer because it was winter there and you know, reverse seasons. Like, and then they caught on. They were a very tart apple. Somebody was craving a tart apple in America, so we got taken over by those green apples. Anyway, um, if you use the Macintosh apples, as I do sometimes, they oxidize very quickly. They turn brown very quickly. So I like to do them at the very end, you know, after everything is all mixed. The other day I used uh, Macoon, not Makun, I'm sorry, um, I'll think of it, uh, Mutsu, and they don't oxidize very quickly. So I was able to do the apples. You peel them and core them and cut them up into about approximately, roughly, half-inch pieces. Um, and the batter itself is this. You, in, in your stand-up mixer, so, oh, in the end, you're going to end up with four to five cups of half-inch pieces of apple, no skin. The batter is this. In the, in the bowl of, if you're using a hand, you can use a handheld mixer uh, or a stand-up mixer, either way. If you use a, a stand-up, uh, use the paddle, not the whisk. Beat four eggs until they're well mixed and light. And then gradually, very gradually, add two cups of sugar. It's a lot of sugar, but it's a big cake. And uh, beat that together until it's very light and thick. Um, into that, you will slowly pour, as you are beating at the same time, a cup of vegetable oil. I use canola oil. You can use whatever you like. Um, don't use olive oil. Too much flavor. Um, once the, uh, uh, the oil is added, you will add the liquid, which is a quarter of a cup of orange juice. If you don't have orange juice in the house, you can use a quarter of a cup of a liqueur, like an orange liqueur, or... You know, I'm thinking a little milk if you're not caring about the dairy aspect. This is orange juice as a liquid because we're, we're concerned about having dairy in the cake. It's a Jewish cake, parv. And that, uh, so a, ha a quarter of a cup of some liquid, a tablespoon of vanilla, and you beat that in. And then little by I, 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 I do little by little so it doesn't fly all over the place. But you could add it all at once, stop the machine, add all your flour, your dry ingredients, which just also has the baking powder and salt, and blend that in on low speed. You do not want to overwork the flour. This is a mixing uh, you know, technique. Do not overmix once you've added the flour. And then, then by hand, with a spatula, stir in the apples, and here are your walnuts, a cup of chopped walnuts, which I do ahead of time, too. So actually, when I bake, I, I do all the prep ahead, and you're just doing the steps. In this case, uh, you know, you're basically making, you're cutting the apples, making the batter, and stirring it up. B this gets baked in the 12-cup tube pan that you've well greased um, for 
one and a half hours at 375 degrees. I know this sounds like a long time, but as I said, it's a big cake and a dense cake. And you do want to cool the cake at least 20 minutes in the pan. Then see if you can take it out of the pan. If you can't, you can finish cooling on a rack or on, I do it on the stove, you know, on top of the grill. It, it, it has plenty of air all around it. You can leave it in there. It will pull away from the sides as it cools, and, and it gets easier to, to, to undo. When I use my tube pan, I, um, I cut the first slice while it's still on the false bottom tube because it's then much easier to remove the whole cake uh, and put it on a cake stand or a cake plate. Uh, but it's a homey cake, though. If you want to dust the top with confectioner's sugar to give it a little bit more, I don't know what, uh, the sweetness is insignificant, uh, it, it gets a little prettier. But I like it um, best cooled thoroughly, not while it's still warm. I know some people can't resist, but see if you can. It all comes together literally after five or six hours. So it's good. If you make it in the morning, you can eat it that night with, with pleasure. Uh, but the next day and the day after that, because it stays fresh for a long time, or, or, or may even be better. And what I do love is the crunchy top. Um, if you do this in a bun pan, you don't get a crunchy top because the crunchy top becomes the bottom. But in a tube pan, uh you, the crunchy top is still the top when you take it off the tube. And I love that part. So to keep that as crunchy as possible, um, I never wrap this cake in, in, in plastic, and I never put it under a cake dome. I wrap it in aluminum foil where air can, in fact, get to it and keep that crust. If it's, you know, it's no big deal if it's not. Um, I, you know, it's really crunchy and nice, though. So I made another cake, too, for Rosh Hashanah, only because I had various people stopping by yesterday, and I thought, well, this will be a nice big cake um, for, for uh, everybody, including uh, my, my friend's uh, 20-something daughter who just moved into her first apartment by herself and around the corner from me. Anyway, it's crumb cake, New York crumb cake. Do you... Do you, do you remember New York crumb cake, yeah, Marshall? Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, it, I never knew that it was a New York thing until I wrote uh, Arthur Schwartz's New York City Food. Uh, because it, was, it was a standard bakery item in, in, in here when I grew up in Brooklyn. And it somehow coffee cake, crumb cake, became a thing in the Italian-American community, at least here in Brooklyn. And I have very, very fond memories of a neighbor, Teresa Carrera, who was actually Italian, I'm sorry, Irish, married to an Italian, the, the, the most common intermarriage in New York. And she baked a really fabulous crumb cake, big sheets of it she would make. And knowing my father loved this cake, for his birthday, she would cut a, uh, a huge slab of it, and put it in a shirt box and wrap it up as a birthday gift for my father, who, by the way, the other big birthday gift he got uh, from another neighbor was a, a giant jar of Bosco. Bosco. So that was, wow. now you know a lot about my father. <laughs> so, which was his favorite chocolate syrup for, um, I do have Bosco, is right, right? Yeah, it was, yeah for, for making egg creams, which my father did all the time. Anyway, um, the cake, I, I have a really, really good recipe for it, a really fluffy sour cream cake topped with super crunchy and abundant crumbs. To some people, this cake is just about the crumbs. Uh, and it's in, uh, it's in New York City food. So I made this cake, uh, and I must say I swear by it. <laughs> uh, but as I... As I just said, uh, some of my guests just wanted to pick at the crumbs. So I'm actually considering making just the crumbs without the cake underneath and maybe throwing in some nuts into the crumbs. There, there is an Italian cake called Spisolana, uh, made in Modena, uh, that is basically that. Crumbs stuck together 
and I do think they put nuts in. I have to go look up. I have a recipe for it somewhere. But um, you might you might be amused by the crumbs. They're really good. Um, you two and a half cups of flour, one and a half cups of dark brown sugar. Now, I went out and bought a fresh box of dark brown sugar, even though I have some hard-as-a-rock brown sugar in the house, which I could soften in the microwave. But I wouldn't do it for this recipe, because when you soften um, uh, uh, brown sugar in the microwave, it gets hard very quickly. And as I wanted to make these crumbs ahead, and I want the sugar to mix well with the flour, I went out and bought another box of brown sugar. So one and a half cups of brown sugar, two and a half cups of flour, and don't get scared, two sticks of butter melted. Um, And that's it. Um, Flour, sugar, butter, uh, flavoring. And for flavoring, I use a generous teaspoon of vanilla, which I drizzled um, all around it, and cinnamon, uh, two tablespoons of cinnamon. could be even a little more, maybe, if you want cinnamony crumbs. Mix that all together very, very well, and when you're ready to make the crumbs, you take a batch of, you know, take a fistful of this, and it's going to all cling together and break it up. Instead of just breaking, you know, instead of making tiny crumbs, you want a lot of them to be big clumps. So you bake this. Now, in theory, they should bake at 375, let's say, 375 for about a half an hour. And that should do it. But if you want them even crunchier, you could leave them in longer. Now, if I was going to add nuts, I would add some chopped nuts to that. And I'm telling you, you could forget the cake. <laughs> I know. I, I, as a kid, I always used to just eat the top of it. I, you're, you're exactly. Right. So why bother with the bottom? I'll tell you why. Because my cake is really fluffy and nice. But um, um, yeah, one cake per show is enough. I did a lot. I'm doing a lot with with apples because I'm, as I pointed out, in the last couple of weeks, I didn't eat apples for a long time because they're very high as a fruit. They're high in carbs. A medium apple has about 25 grams of carb, but they're very high in fiber. So in the in the keto world, you deduct the um, the grams of fiber from the grams of total carb, and you get what's called net carbs. And you know if you're on a keto diet, you're supposed to keep your carbs under 40, and way under if you really can, under 40 per day. So um, right away, in one apple, you're eating half of your daily carbs. So I avoided apples. Um, But now I'm eating a more sensible diet, and I can eat apples again. And as the old saying goes, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And that's because apples are very nutritious. And even though they have 25 grams of carbs per apple, uh, that's not a lot in, in, in the carb world, really. Uh, they're sweet. It's satisfying. They're filling, and you can cook a lot of things with them. I love baked apples. In fact, oh, yeah. uh, you like you too, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. What could be bad? I, I tell you, they can be bad. I've had <laughs> bad baked <laughs> apples, and I was reading some recipes on the internet this morning. And you know what? There are a lot of recipes for bad back that baked apples out there, including one that's not a bad recipe in general, but. Uh, the, the writer says they're going to be at 3.50. They're going to be done in 15 to 20 minutes. Right. Why do mine always take an hour? That's because you guess the way it's got to be. Because uh, I, I, it's ridiculous. And there were a couple of comments about this recipe saying, well, it's very good, except it took closer to an hour, <laughs> which is what you have to plan on. So, uh, and, and, and I find even the big apples... Uh, I mean, the big apples take, but even the small apples can take an hour. I have something I inherited from my mother, which I doubt I'm going to use this season because last year I was having trouble with it. It's a ceramic dish with a cone in the middle, ceramic like the dish itself, which goes into the uh, cored apple. So you put the cored apple over this uh, ceramic thing in the middle, and you bake. 
stick your apples in it? Well, it speed ups the whole process. So if you're not really careful, you're going to end up with applesauce and, and not a baked apple. And I've even tried those giant Roma apples, which are the classic baked apple apple, by the way. And I don't like Roma apples to eat, but to bake, they're terrific. So even with the Roma apples, it takes, I don't know, it just, uh, you have to, like, watch it. So I like to just throw it in the oven and uh, be done with it. And my standard baked apple is I peel just the top third. I core the apples. I have a core. It's an easy job. Uh, I, and then I uh, peel just the top third of the apple, and I press the uh, the skin portion of the apple into a little dish of turbinado sugar. It's the only sugar I use, just what I can press into the peeled top of the apple. Um, and let's say it, it's not going to take more than like a couple teaspoons of sugar per apple. And then I put a little dry vermouth, which I always have in the house at the bar, which is behind my stove. It's not behind my stove, but close enough. <laughs> so I just Google, Google, even if I don't have, or if you have an open bottle of white wine, put in, you know, a quarter of a cup, depends on how many apples you're making, but let's say for four apples in an eight-inch square dish, which is my standard. Um, in fact, I have one square dish that I like looking at, so I use it for baked apples, so I can bring them to the table in the dish they were baked in. And um, that's it. And you can baste them once. That's nice. Uh, the syrup uh, that forms with the white wine or vermouth, dry vermouth, is uh, a sweet just by the basting of the apples and the sugar in the apple. It's not a lot of sugar. And you know, after, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the apple, and the variety of the apple, too, by the way, um, your apples are done. Also, how you like it. You know, do you like it mushy, or do you like it uh, crisp? I mean, sometimes Bob wants to eat the apple with a knife and fork, because I've left them sort of crisp in the middle, but I like it that way. Anyway, baked apples. So this is, uh, and baked apples are very, I mean, even with a little sugar and wine, they're an extremely healthy thing to eat. Now, the classic, as I said, is Rome, but you know, um, so many apples. Um, I lately use Mutsu a lot because they're crisp, firm. Uh, if you're baking, it, baking apples, they keep their shape. They don't oxidize. They're those big green apples, Mutsu. I also like Jana Gold. I also like well, I, you know, I, I do love the flavor of Macintosh. I think Macintosh is to apples what iceberg is to lettuce. Much disparaged for absolutely no reason. <laughs> uh, because I'm enjoying the Macs that I bought um, out of hand, just eating them like that. Um, and even cooking with them. Um, and today I'm going to finish them off because they've been in the house now for a number of days. They're looking beautiful. But today I'm going to finish them off by making some applesauce. You know, it's funny. And, and I think Max is sweet enough. I'm not going to have to add sugar. You're bringing up all these things. My grandmother used to make applesauce. We had lots of apple trees on our property. But she would make them with Granny Smith apples, okay, because those were the apples we had. But when she made – when baked, baked apples were, were done, it was with Macintosh. Uh-huh. So are you, are you suggesting I bake some of these Macs today? I, well, no, no, I, 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 I have to go to somebody's house for a rush on it today, so it I, won't be today. I think but. you. I think you should pick the one that you know that you that you're used to and that you like. But, well, I have and, a whole bowl of them, and, and I like my the baked apples. I, I like my baked apples mushy. You do see? It, it depends. <laughs> I think it's totally dependent on on what you grew up with, probably. You know, I grew up more, uh, my, my mother and my grandma, my mother in particular made baked apples because she considered them diet dessert, <laughs> uh, which they were, it, it, you know, better than pastry. Not I mean, more. my mother was very <laughs> unconscious. <laughs> Not in my we don't, we don't, you know, I, I'm 75 years old, so, you know, in the 50s, my mother was making salad and fresh vegetables, which was not really the thing in the 1950s. The only canned vegetable we had was the syrup peas. <laughs> <laughs> well, in our house, I, <clears throat> she didn't even like peas. She would pick them out of whatever she put them in. 
If you had if you had baked apple, you had you had a scoop of ice cream with it. Well, that ruins the whole thing. But so yeah, my mother was into fruit dessert. We only eat fruit dessert unless it's company or she's playing cards. And you know, then she had to have cake in the house. <laughs> Did you like apple turnovers? I, you know, it depends on the turnover. Right? Most of the ones you buy these yeah. days, the flaky pastry is terrible, yeah. and the apples are sparse. And so the answer is probably no. Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, I would rather eat a good apple, my apple cake, uh, or I have another apple cake that I I'm actually I went out and bought the pan. This is this recipe is in 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 my Southern Italian book, and it, it's a it's a I have to ask Iris. I spoke to Iris this morning, but. This is her sister-in-law's recipe, and we make several things from her sister-in-law. And I don't know if I ever ever made this cake, but it's it's an apple cake, and it but it bakes in a twelve-inch round cake pan. That's not a normal cake pan, so I had to go out and buy a twelve-inch cake pan. Although I eventually figured out that you could use a thirteen by nine-inch Pyrex, or even a better, even not a Pyrex, a metal dish. Um, a metal nine by thirteen, um, but um, it's really the thing. The technique that I learned from uh, her, her name is Franca. From Franca is she uses her handheld mixer to mix the batter. But when it comes to the part where you add the dry ingredients, and as I mentioned before, you don't want to overbeat your dry ingredients. She turns the handheld mixer off and just uses it. Like, like you know, with its two uh, beaters as a handheld whisk, works very well, and you don't have to dirty up anything else. So, do you like do you like apple donuts? <laughs> we have a, a vendor at, the, at our farmers market that makes apple cider donuts. And yes. the answer to that is yes. Oh, you gotta <laughs> have, they're they're, they're, they're consu- take it. I could eat two boxes. <laughs> Well, I probably could, too. That's why I only buy two at a time. <laughs> and, and make sure I don't eat them on the way home, because I really do enjoy them more with a cup of tea or coffee. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's another thing, you know, uh, eating all this cake. <laughs> I've been consuming more coffee than usual, too. Somehow, I don't know, I can't do coffee cake without coffee. That's just the way it is. It's just I, the way it is. I, anyway, happy yeah. holiday to everybody. <coughs> Excuse me, who celebrates? <clears throat> it's it's a new beginning, and we like new beginnings. And uh, it's tomorrow too, you know, yeah. the two day holiday. And then next week is Yom Kippur. But I, I I'm not sure what day of the week it comes out. I don't think I, if it's Monday, I won't be here. But I don't think. I will check this out. I'm not supposed to work today, but I don't view this as work, so it's yeah. okay. <laughs> well, Jill, well, Jill will know what day it is, and we'll, and, and, and we'll, well, know. Well, I can look it up easily yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Arthur. Happy New Year. All right. Year. Have a great week, everybody, and a happy New Year. All right. Take care. Arthur Schwartz, the food maven, here on Robin Hood Radio. You can find all his shows uh, on demand, robinhoodradio.com. Click on on demand. Click on Arthur Schwartz, the food maven, for the full list. Underwriting support for Arthur Schwartz, the food maven, Hillsdale Home Chef. More information, 518-325-7000, hgshomechef.com.